let us go to the next concept force between the two straight parallel conductors carrying the current i1 and i2 in the same direction students let us consider the two straight conductors which are infinitely long x and y these two conductors are carrying the current i1 and i2 in the same direction the separation between these two conductor is d then what is the force experienced by each conductor due to the other conductor that is given by the formula f is equal to mu naught by 4 pi into 2 times of the product of the current i1 i2 divided by the distance into l where l represents the length of the conductor so the force between the two straight parallel conductor is given by mu naught by 4 pi into 2 times of i1 i2 by d into l and remember the nature of the force is attractive the nature of the force is attractive if the current are in the same direction the nature of the force is attractive when the currents are i1 and i2 are in same direction and the nature of the force is repulsive if i1 and i2 are in opposite direction Let us take up the next concept that is the torque acting on the rectangular coil when it is placed in an uniform magnetic field. Let us say there is an uniform F magnetic field is acting you. In this uniform magnetic field, if you are going to place a rectangular coil where the plane of the coil makes an angle theta, then the force experienced by this limb and the force experienced by this limb are in the opposite direction. Those two forces which are acting in the opposite direction will constitute a torque that is the rotational effect. The torque is given by the formula m into b into cos theta where m is the magnetic moment of the coil that is current into area, b is the magnetic field theta is the angle made by the plane of the coil with the magnetic field. Students, here you have to be very careful. If the angle is not measured from the plane of the coil, if the angle is measured from the normal, let us draw the normal which is perpendicular to the plane. If the angle is measured from the normal to the plane of the coil, let us say the angle is alpha, then the torque is given by the formula m into b into sin alpha. So, you have to be very careful while solving the problems based on the torque acting on the rectangular coil in an uniform magnetic field. The formula is mb cos theta or you have to make use of mb sin theta. When you have to make use of cos theta, if the angle is measured from the plane of the coil with the magnetic field. Suppose if the angle theta is measured from the normal to the magnetic field, then directly use the formula tau is given by m into b into sin theta. So, when the torque acting on this rectangular coil is maximum and minimum, observe here, in order to get the maximum torque in cos theta function, theta must be 0, then cos 0 will be plus 1, so torque will be maximum. In order to get theta equals to 0, the plane of the coil must be placed perpendicular to the magnetic field. So, torque is maximum when the plane of the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field or in other words, the normal should be parallel to the magnetic field. Similarly, the torque is minimum if the plane of the coil is parallel to magnetic field or I can say the normal is perpendicular to magnetic field.
Let us take up the next concept that is the conversion of galvanometer into ammeter and voltmeter. Uh, in the case of moving coil galvanometer, the current is going to be measured is very less that is of the order nano ampere. So, in order to convert that galvanometer into an ammeter, you have to connect a additional shunt resistance in parallel with the galvanometer. So, in order to convert galvanometer into an ammeter, you have to connect a very small resistance called the shunt resistance in parallel with the galvanometer. Let us say that the current flowing from the external source that is I, the current flowing in the galvanometer is Ig, then the remaining current has to flow through the shunt resistance that is I minus Ig. Then in order to convert this galvanometer of range Ig to range I, then the additional shunt is required that additional shunt is given by the formula S is equal to Ig into G divided by I minus Ig. Suppose if you are converting a range of I as n times of Ig, if you are converting a galvanometer into an ammeter of range n times of the galvanometer current, then the shunt is given by the formula G divided by n minus 1 where n is the range of the ammeter and the resistance of the ideal ammeter. If you are using an ideal ammeter, then the resistance of the ideal ammeter is 0. The resistance of the ideal ammeter is 0. Dear friends, you DVG YouTube channel subscribe to our friends and you can see the videos on the free